Dello Heavy Duty Engine Oils. Proven engine protection at prices you can rely on. Giving you even more reasons to choose Dello. What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Equipment World. I'm your host Brian and today we're here to talk about the monstrosity that you've seen at most of your recent trade shows. We're talking about Trackzilla. This thing is a beast. It's a 600 horsepower telehandler that can reach up I don't even know how far because it's just that massive. And here to talk with us about it is one of the guys involved with creating this behemoth. So without further ado, let's check out the interview. You can't bring a giant telehandler like that to, to Con Expo and then not expect people to want to ask questions. So I appreciate you being willing to answer them. And my first question is, what in the world inspired the creation of this behemoth telehandler? So the inspiration for Trackzilla came from a bigger relationship between BZI and especially Innovatech and Extreme. So Innovatech is the innovation branch in the BZI family of companies. And our job here is to create new ways of doing things, especially focusing on efficiency and safety. And so we'll come up with attachments and systems that change the way construction is done and Trackzilla was a part of that. We needed something that was more nimble, that could handle bigger loads, that could reach higher, kind of complement some of the systems that we were coming up with and try to remove cranes from the job site. So a, a quote I like that kind of encapsulates Innovatech is it's not about ideas, it's about making ideas happen. That's from Scott Belsky. And there's a ton of great ideas out on the job site, especially you've, you've been there, you know, these dirt guys and construction guys have a lot of really good ideas on better ways of doing things. So the inspiration for Trackzilla came from people out on the job site and the funding and the company and the structure of Innovatech and BZI funneling that into something that could actually be built. I do love that aspect of the construction industry where when you really start talking to a lot of OEMs, a lot of the ideas that have come out over the last 50-ish years have really started at the boots on the ground level and then worked their way up to an OEM or, or an outright company that is started by those guys putting that idea into process and into action. So that's very cool. And another piece of this story is where the nickname for Trackzilla came from. Uh, when it was first kind of floated around, it was circulating in Extremes Engineers. And we had a in-person meeting and one of their engineers pulled out this guy right here. He had 3D printed oh, nice. that little <laughs> unit and brought that to a meeting and the name stuck. And you know, good luck, good luck getting rid of that name now. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. And it's created kind of its own aura and presence out there. Every time I see this thing, it is just everyone standing around it with their jaws agape. Everywhere it goes, people are taking selfies with it. People are asking questions about it. Everyone wants to sit in the cab. It's incredible the public interest in this machine and how wide of an impact it's made on social media, on the job site, everywhere it goes. See, that's one of the biggest parts about construction that people outside of construction just don't quite get is we have the coolest toys and it doesn't matter if you're in the industry or not. Everyone appreciates a giant forklift with 600 plus horsepower. Like who doesn't appreciate something that awesome? And we get to play with it because we chose the trades. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, that, that's something that people don't realize. And something like Trackzilla, there's nothing like it. There's some unique features in the cab, in the way the cab moves up and down, in the stability of the base. It's incredibly stable. It has an automatic leveling feature. You drive it across the job site and you never have to touch the leveling feature at all. It keeps it locked right in. Wow. You mentioned the 600 plus horsepower, 675. This is a hydrostatic machine. Everything on it is hydraulic. Just a point of interest, when that boom is all the way up in the air and you're providing full flow hydraulics to the tip of that boom, it's using over 400, it's about 450 horsepower of that just to get the oil up there. Wow, because you're fighting gravity to get it up that high? Is that really what it boils down to? 
it's gravity, it's the friction in the hoses, it's the pressures you need up there, the flow you need, all of the above. I'm a dirt guy. I don't know anything about the, the kind of building trades and what goes into creating structures. So for a dirt guy, can you break down what is the advantage of a giant telehandler like Traxilla over some of your more traditional options that you've got available to you on the job site? But before we get into that, I want to take a second to tell you about the sponsor of this video, Chevron Lubricants. These cranes work around the clock for months at a time. If one of these engines ever goes down, it costs more than our reputation. Switching to Dello 600 ADF, it's been a game changer. We've had no issues with clogged DPFs. I mean, no regen lights, no cleaning, no replacements, nothing. This oil goes beyond anything we've ever used. I choose proven protection that keeps our cranes on the job. I choose Dello 600 ADF. What is the advantage of a giant telehandler like Traxilla over some of your more traditional options that you've got available to you on the job site? Yeah, so the advantages of Traxilla over the traditional methods, which involves you know heavy crane usage. So there's a ton of certifications permitting a lot of red tape when it comes to using a crane on a job site. Everybody's used to doing it, so it it's kind of become mainstream. But also you have extra people on the ground with the crane that are rigging whatever you need to carry and that especially if you're down lower you need to manage that load with the ropes tied to it and those riggers handling it to to make sure that it doesn't impact anything on the way to be set so those are some you know low level immediate changes now in the case of BZI we we don't use a traditional erection method. So in the case of these Amazons, rather than erect a building from the bottom up, we actually erect it from the top down. We'll stand the columns. We came up with some other innovations to hold those walls in place until we could place the roof. And then at that point, you can't use a crane. You need something that can go inside the building and set the five or four floors or mezzanine levels. And really the advantage that that gives you is the ability to pour concrete and get the other trades in on that top floor and it's it's closed in from the weather. And we were able to cut some of the timelines of these jobs in half by using that method. Wow. So a crane is, is not even an option in that case. And uh, Trackzilla, we wanted it to set that top level and just remove the cranes entirely. Interesting. So we've all seen this thing kind of strutted around to a lot of the shows around the country and everything. And it's awesome to look at. But now that it's actually on the job, how are you guys finding it's performing? Yeah, so the way that it's performing on the job site, as with any new innovation, there's always changes that happen. There's always little tweaks that you make once it lands there. I would say it's quite a bit like a logarithmic curve. You know, there's a massive amount of changes and then you start tweaking it a little bit. So when it landed on the job, we had some of extreme engineers there with it to manage any issues or anything that comes up. They did some final program tweaks, made it smoother to operate. So it's been surprising on the job. We thought it would do a specific thing, and that was to handle one of our attachments that handle these big sections. But we found it was much more efficient for setting massive columns. We hauled heavier pieces of steel with it than ever before. And it's just become a universal just an all around extremely useful piece of equipment. And the final point I would make on that is the first job it landed on, they were starting that job eight weeks behind schedule due to some engineering issues that they had earlier. And with the help of Trackzilla and the team there, they finished that job two weeks ahead of schedule. Wow, that's dramatic improvement on the timeline. And that's just ultimately Personally. is that kind of the fact that you're not having to tear down, move, reset up a crane to do all of these picks and kind of the overall job process changing? That has to do with the fact that Trackzilla is extremely nimble. You can handle larger sections of the building and we do a modular construction. We build pieces on the ground and this thing could pick them up on the ground, maneuver them through the building, set them in place in you know, way faster time than you could with a crane. It is funny. 
I'm on the other end of that all the time. It's we'll we'll get a piece of equipment or, or something we need to use, and this is the way the engineers come out and the designers say this is the way it should be used. And every single time we're like, okay, just give us a couple minutes and we'll go play with it. And then you come to find out there's right. 18 different ways you can use it that that make these areas also way more efficient. And and I will say it's always fun to be on a project when you do have the design team there because now all of a sudden it's a two-way dialogue and and you almost exponentially start to increase the efficiency and the knowledge that come out of that experience that everyone can kind of take and improve upon. Well, and we also have the advantage that, you know, BZI was founded by farmers that used to torch and weld and build things from scratch before CAD. And I mean, I have quite extensive dirt experience myself before becoming an engineer. So you find these kind of grassroots uh, blue collar types that understand what it's like to be out there on the job. Yeah. So I'm going to ask the big question that I know is on my mind. I'm, I'm thinking it's probably on some other people's minds as well. Is Tragzilla a one-off monster or are there plans to have other units come out eventually? So no, Tragzilla is not a one-off monster. They will become commercially available. You can check more on that by looking at Extreme Manufacturing's website. They do offer it on there and it will be available to the public. That's awesome. So just out of curiosity, does this require any sort of special certification or can the guy that's been driving that regular, you know, 60 foot reach telehandler around the job site, jump in this thing and, and be ready to rock? So as someone that has been in construction and in the dirt industry, you know, there's different levels of job sites. So, I mean, if this is in the yard, people have jumped on it and we've given them a rundown and been able to drive it in the yard. But the type of job sites that it's on and the, the high profile situations it lands in, there's absolutely some special certifications that you need to have in order to operate it on a job site. Gotcha. So uh, my final question for you is, do you foresee this kind of being the pinnacle of these sort of designs or do you foresee there being a next size up Traxilla eventually? Will these get bigger? So what you'll find with uh, Innovatech, BZI, Extreme, we're always looking at a better and more efficient way of doing something. So there has already been discussions of a bigger unit. It makes people all kinds of excited and we are just getting into the concrete and tilt up space. And so when you start talking about the weights involved there, I would, I would uh, keep your eyes open on our socials and website and see what comes down the pipe. By, by next Con Expo? We, it's just now it's every Con Expo, <laughs> there's gotta be a bigger, badder model. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, you'll see it's next year for sure. <laughs> That's fantastic. That's awesome. Well, Worth, thank you so much for the time. I really appreciate it. And, uh, and thanks for building such a behemoth machine. That thing's awesome. Absolutely. It's, it's been an amazing thing to be a part of. Well, thank you again for Worth coming on the show to let us know how did this thing came to be and what inspired such an awesome machine. And thank you for the update on how well it's performing on the job. It's really cool to see something like this come to fruition and not only perform like it was supposed to, but well above and beyond. So as always, I hope this helps you in your business. We'll catch you on the next episode of The Dirt.